Leon, I did that. Lily here reviewing Boom For Real, the first ever major Basquiat retrospective to happen in the UK. Tracking his career from the 17 year old that sold Andy Warhol a postcard for one dollar in a restaurant, to the man that became Warhol's collaborator and I think superior, a darling of the art world in his life and after it. The film Downtown 81 helps to contextualise Basquiat's work within his own lived experiences. That is, as an essentially nomadic person looking into the rooms of Manhattan from street level. You see that on the canvas. There are too many colours, too many words for your brain to process. And that's the experience of walking around a city. Signs selling to you, banning you from places, directing you and misdirecting you. It's a shame that because so many of these pieces are privately owned, so many of them in this exhibition are behind glass, you lose some of that immediacy and what you also lose is a sense of the matteness of these canvases. Deep dark crimsons, matte matte blacks, bright whites. One of the most significant ways that Basquiat uses colour is in the inversion of the traditional depiction of the skull. Whereas most people depict white bone, black eyes, Basquiat does the opposite. But it takes away the idea that blackness behind the eyes is something that is negative. Instead, it's the burning bright white of Basquiat's skull's eyes that is terrifying and crisis inducing. One of the things that the exhibition tracks is Basquiat's use of text. So as Samo, his words are oppositional. Samo is not the same as Big Max. Samo is not the same as Plush. Samo is not the same as the bourgeoisie. So it's constantly defining yourself in the negative, what you stand against. As Jean-Michel Basquiat, the approach to text becomes more nuanced. So Basquiat uses words to make gods out of the people that he idolizes. Jack Johnson's name is written across a white piece of canvas hung across a frame. It could be an altar piece, it could be a robe, so thus Jack Johnson is deified. It's the same with the words Pablo Picasso, written again and again across a canvas. It becomes like a chant or a prayer, an invocation of some higher muse via this one name. You can't not be struck by the briefness of the chronologies in this exhibition. Whereas you expect when you're walking around an art gallery to see this was the development over the course of 10 years of this artist's life, we are only talking about an artistic career of 10 years. Therefore, a painting from 1983 looks nothing like a painting from 1984. The exhibition ends really abruptly, which is at once disturbing and totally fitting for Basquiat's life. In with a boom and out with a bang. Basquiat's work is instantly recognisable and fully accepted into the cultural mainstream. You can see it on Instagram, you can see it on album covers, but that's not a bad thing. He did say, after all, that he wanted Samo to be a logo that was as recognisable as Pepsi. But seeing the work in the flesh, there's something unquantifiable about it. You've seen the crown on an album cover or someone's artwork, but you don't understand until you see it, the divine imperfectness of it. The Renaissance artist Giotto proved to the Pope that he was a great artist by drawing a perfect circle. Basquiat proves he's a great artist by refusing to draw the circle perfectly.